Did you know that more than one third of Americans are considered to be obese? And for many people that brings on a lifetime of struggling with their diet and their weight. And sometimes the best fix is surgery. So happy this morning to welcome Dr. Jamie Ponce, who is uh, with CHI Memorial's Bariatric and Metabolic Care. Good to have you this morning. Thank you. Thank with you. a timely topic uh, for us because this week happens to be National Obesity Care Week. Correct. You know, so this week uh, is uh, we're trying to create awareness at a national level about the problem of obesity, as you mentioned. Uh, obesity now, the latest statistics from the CDC are close to 39% of the uh, adult population in the United States are considered obese. So it's a devastating problem. It's growing, and I wish I can tell you that obesity doesn't come without consequences. But you know, there's a lot of health consequences associated to obesity. Many people that suffer from obesity, they also suffer from type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and all the psychosocial problems. You know, they uh, struggle to do outdoor activities, uh, doing their job, the physical disabilities that comes with that, uh, quality of life decreases. Well, and I would think your self-esteem really takes its toll because I have had a chance to speak with people who who've had these surgeries and they say that they it's not without trying maybe since they were early teens they've tried every diet that's come out there but for whatever reason it doesn't it doesn't work it's interesting so all these patients come to our clinic and they can give you a list of all the treatments that they've done you know they tried Weight Watcher, Janie Craig, all the diets in the world they have uh, uh, tried medications, mm -hmm. uh, exercise and it's amazing, you know, sometimes the genetic doesn't allow them to maintain that weight loss. You know, they lose and gain, they lose and gain, and they continue to suffer with uh, through that problem. And the biggest consequences, you know, is also, you know, lifespan. You know, these people are going to live less years. It's well known that people that have 100 pounds above their ideal weight, they can live seven years less than a person with a normal weight. Wow. And as the weight goes higher, mm -hmm they tend to live less years. So let's talk about some of the options because we think about the gastric bypass. That is not the only it's procedure the only done. Option. No, we have to think of obesity treatment as a chronic disease. We have to uh, respect that every patient needs to try first diet, exercise, lifestyle, behavioral modification, and all that needs to be done with uh, supervision. Now they've had tried that. Now we have some medications in the in the market. You know, the FDA has approved four medications that allow these patients to decrease their appetite. And then we have also options in which we can put a balloon endoscopically. Mm -hmm. It's under sedation, and these patients can allow them to have a support of feeling full and then still follow a diet. And then we have surgery. But surgery is reserved for people that are more severely obese, usually 100 pounds or more above their ideal weight. They can be a little bit less overweight if they have medical problems. Surgery right now has become very safe. Every time that we mention the word surgery, mm -hmm. people get scared. I mean, you, sure. you don't want to have surgery and jump into surgery. So surgery, bariatric surgery has become much safer than many other surgeries that you probably have heard about it. Gallbladder surgery, mm -hmm. hysterectomies, hip surgery. Bariatric surgery is actually much safer. Why? Because now we do all this by laparoscopic techniques. We have a lot of safety measures in the hospital. Hospitals have to go to an accreditation process in which they have to have everything in place to take care of these patients. Surgery actually is the most effective therapy for those patients because not only they improve, I mean, the, it's amazing. You can see a patient with type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. They're taking medications after a few months. They're off of it. Off of it. Okay, so let's go back to something you said. If someone comes into your office for a first time visit, and by the way, you can self-refer. Uh, to see you, then you're going to discuss with them, I guess, their history, their lifestyle, Correct. what they've tried in the past. But if they've even tried diets, and most have, is that where you start because you're supervising them perhaps in a different way? Yes. Yeah, so we, we look at a patient of how much obesity they have. You know, if somebody has about 30 pounds above their ideal weight, at mm -hmm. that point they need to try a lot of diet, exercise, behavior modification. And all that needs to be supported by the program. You know, we have dietitians, we have psychologists, so and we have exercise therapists that can allow them to help them to do that. And you can provide them with meal plans. Exactly. Okay. So both things, you know, provide them with meal plans, with exercise plans. Accountability is very important so they can come and engage into the program. And then we move on to patients that are more severely obese, those already come with a list of things that they have tried. So it's not like they haven't tried and they fail and fail and fail. 
Remember, um, a patient that is looking for surgery is really not, not thinking about it today or yesterday. You know, they have thought about it for a while. So Correct. most of the patients have already done research. They go to the internet. They talk to somebody else that have had surgery. And do we need to reach a point, or have we gotten there yet, where we don't see the need for a bariatric procedure as a failure? Do we, do we see that as having a weakness in ourselves if we require that? I think, I think the perception out there is that um, surgery is the easy way out, mm -hmm. that uh, people just do this because it's actually surgery is not the easy way out. People still have to work with the surgery. The surgery is a big tool, it's a strong tool, and if the patient works with the surgery, doing eating the right way, the right food, and exercise, they can maintain their weight for a long time. So surgery is very effective. 85, 90% of the people maintain their weight loss. But there are some people that don't. And the reason is because they think that surgery is magic. Surgery will make them lose a lot of weight in one year, but then they regain it because they do everything wrong. So it's important to be in the program. And we have that program at Memorial So Hospital. you know your uh, expertise so well uh, that you are presenting actually and speaking at a national yes. conference this week in Washington, D.C. Yes, so this week uh, at Washington, D.C. we have uh, what is called the Obesity Week and uh, we have several presentations. I'm in the leadership. So the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery and the Obesity Society are two national organizations that put together a meeting every year and, and the whole discussion is for professionals to discuss uh, things about obesity and treatment. So he can help you. Simply, it's a matter of calling the number that you see there on your screen. Uh, their office is on Shallowford Road, and it is the Metabolic and Bariatric Care Center at CHI Memorial, 899-1000 is that phone number. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're back after this.